let's talk about how you can use a bell curve to find probabilities. So when we're talking about a bell curve, we'll be mentioning the area under the curve or the area to the left or the area to the right. Well, the area underneath that bell curve is equal to one because it's 100%. So there'll be times where we'll have a z-score and we need to find the area to the left or the area to the right. In Excel, this is going to be our function equals norm dot s dot dist. That function will always give you the area to the left of the z score, which sometimes is exactly what we want. Other times we're going to have to mess around with it a little to get to the answer that we're looking for. Let's say if we need to find the area to the right of a z score, if we want something that's greater than. Then we need to do one minus norm.s.dist because everything under that bell curve is equal to one. So if we do one minus whatever is to the left, that's going to return to us the area to the right. Sometimes we need to know areas between two different z-scores. Right, a z-score is just like an address on the bell curve. It's just telling you where you are on this bell curve. So if we need to find the area between two of those z-scores, we're going to just use equals norm.s.dist like normal. So we find the area to the left for each of them. Right, for the first z-score, we'll use equals norm.s.dist then we'll do the same thing for the second z-score. It's going to kick back two different areas or two different probabilities. We then just subtract those two numbers that we get, and that will give us the area between two different z-scores. So here's our bell curve. Let's say we are looking for the z-score based off of this information. So this would be like the bottom 5% of a population, right? We're over there on the left side. So we know we're going to have a negative Z score and we want to find out what that Z score is for the bottom 5%. So we have this function in Excel equals norm dot S dot I N V. And we put in the 0.05 and that will kick back to us a z-score. So z-score is negative, which is okay with us here because we're on the left side of our bell curve. Our z-score here would be negative 1.645. Now, what if we were looking for the top 10%? If we were looking for the top 10%, all of a sudden we're over there on the right side of our bell curve, which means that our z-score is going to need to be positive. Well, if we put in 0.10 into our norm.s.inv function, it's going to kick back a negative z-score. Now, this is okay because we can see from our bell curve we're on the right side, we're on the positive side, we can just turn that z-score into a positive, right? So it, it kicks back the negative 1.28. We can just say that it's positive 1.28. Or you change in your Excel function itself the 0.10 to 0.9. And that would also kick back this positive 1.28 as a z-score. You would then be able to plug in this 1.28 into just the z-score formula and work your way backwards to find your x, to find out which x value would give you the top 10%.